last name, man. You know, right, crazy. Then the D. Crazy. The big T. Crazy, man. So I just made it through security now um, in Dallas, Lowell Field Airport. So I'm heading out to my gate. I don't know why, but like my American experiences in airports have not been the greatest. Like the people here never seem like they want to actually work. Like they feel like they're, it's like they're not happy to be here because they always have such an attitude. Like they don't have to always be so feisty and rude to people who are just trying to travel. That's an observation I had. But anyways, guys, so I am leaving Texas now. And I promised you guys from the preparatory vlog that I was going to uh, vlog my time in Texas, uh, the people I'm meeting, because I've met so many people I haven't met in a long time, which was really quite special, but it was difficult. In all transparency, it was difficult, more because I was trying to juggle uh, vlogging and having conversations and just interacting with people I've not met in a long time. You know, I haven't met them in a long time, so you want to really take the time to catch up and do all that stuff. But then it was like, we're talking, we're having conversations, we're just having a good time, we're hanging out. And then my head is like, should I vlog this? But I don't want to like, you know, disrupt the mood to go get a camera and put it there and then continue talking, you know what I mean? I don't know, I feel like vloggers would understand the struggle. But yeah, it was difficult, so I just chose to actually just spend quality time with people here. I don't necessarily focus so much on making the content. Um, the memories I did document in other ways. So like I posted a lot of the, the, the snapshots of specific moments. So like when I look at them, I can, you know, remember those moments. Uh, you can check my Instagram out if you want to like see more of what the day-to-day -day hanging out was like in Dallas. Dallas was a vibe. Like a time was had in Dallas. Chick-fil-A. Anytime I see Chick-fil-A, bro. <laughs> I might give me some chicken, but I'm going to California, so I'm still gonna. Uh, so yeah, Texas was great. I'm gonna post some videos and highlights so you can get a vibe of what it was like. But Texas was great. I'm done now going to California. So I'm going to San Francisco first and then LA. I'm flying through Atlanta. Um, so it's gonna be, it's exciting. I can vlog that one because I'm hopefully not gonna meet that many people. I'm gonna meet many people in LA, not San Francisco, because San Francisco is most likely gonna be just a nature hike myself. Maybe meeting a few people here and there, but not as drastic as Dallas was. So yeah, we'll see what that is. Hopefully I can actually vlog that. No promises. I guess if this vlog makes it online, it means I actually succeeded to vlog it. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go on a plane, find my gate. Oh, here's my gate, Atlanta. Head to Atlanta, then head to San Francisco. And then, yeah, we'll see what the trip is like. For now, let's hit the road. Or rather, let's hit the air. Okay guys, so as I leave and breathe, we have made it to San Francisco. Gonna find my luggage, cause my baggage was supposed to have gone straight to San Francisco while I went through Atlanta. So hopefully this arrived, get my luggage, and then I'm relying on public transportation to get into the city center, so like downtown, cause my hostel is downtown. I'm staying at a hostel tonight, and then tomorrow I'm going over to a friend's place. So hopefully I can get to my hostel this night using public transport. I don't want to result to an Uber, but it might have to come to that. But yeah, we are in uh, California. Crazy. Luggage has been picked up. Um, and there's one, there's one cool thing I like about traveling with Delta, which is the first time I'm actually experiencing that after all my years of intense travel, is the amount of detailed information you get about your stuff. Like when my luggage was checked in, they told me it was checked into this plane, which is going to this destination. Because the lady at the counter just told me, your bag is going straight to San Francisco, although I was going through Atlanta. So then the, the text you get from Delta tell you, your bag is checked into this flight, going to this destination. And then when I was leaving Atlanta, they were like, your bag is in this flight, going to this destination, to San Francisco. And then when I arrived here, they literally sent me a text when my bag was leaving, which makes sense, because I think the bags are scanned, the barcodes are scanned. But it texted me when my bag was getting on the baggage claim, so I kind of knew when to expect my bag coming. And like when I got the text, between when I got the text and when the bag actually arrived, me, it was like two minutes. So I do like the intensity or the, the intentionality with letting you know where your stuff is, which is good. It's a psychological thing where the more you know, the higher the trust. <laughs> it's the first time I'm experiencing it, but I definitely know that I like the level of trust I'm getting in Delta because of the small things. It's the small details, right? And I think the more you get to sweat these small details, that's the more trust and credibility you build. So that's, a, that's an interesting and nice aspect about flying with Delta.
all right guys so i am surviving public transportation in the u.s <laughs> so the purchase of a ticket to go downtown is not self-explanatory so i stepped out of the train you have to, I had to take two trains so one train from the terminal was on which is a domestic terminal because my flight was domestic to the international terminal and from the international terminal to downtown so i stepped out of the first train and of course i have to get tickets and then i go to the machine and they're saying stuff about clipper cards, clipper cards, and the machines are not self-explanatory. Like they're, maybe I had to read more, but they were not, they did not seem self-explanatory. Like travel to love conscious, the machines kind of tell you what to do. But this one's looked very angry. Uh, <laughs> whatever that means. So anyways, I figured it out. You have to get a clipper card, um, at least $3 to get the card, and then you have to load the card up. The ride from here to downtown to my uh, hostel is 28 minutes. So the whole journey is 35 minutes, and it costs $10.55. So of course that means $3 plus $10.55, so I just put like $15 on here. I'm probably not gonna use this again, but I might be exploring the city tomorrow, so I might just load this up at some point. So you can always just load this up, and you need one per passenger. Figure that out, loaded it up, checked in, and now this train, I hope I'm on the right train, that I think is the right train, the yellow line going downtown. And it's a three minute walk from the train stop, or it's a six minute walk from the train stop I get off on to my hostel. So let's see, so far, so good. Apparently San Francisco's public transportation system is supposed to be good. So, fingers crossed. It's about 10, 18 in the evening, in the night. And I just got to my hostel, just checked in now. Uh, this is what the hostel looks like. Pretty much. There's other people here as well, but they're not there now. I imagine they're outside. You guys actually left the train and it felt cold, like it's 13 degrees. So it really cools down at night and then in the morning the sun is out. It's not very hot, but it's nice, like 18, 19 degrees. So it's just nice temperatures during the day, but at night it's cold. So I had to stop and like put on my jacket. But anyways, maybe to the hostel. It's really nice. They asked me if I wanted like the upper bed or the lower bed. I thought that was cool because they never really asked. So I said, lower please. And they have like places to store my suitcases. They even borrowed me a padlock so I can lock it up. That's really cool. And tomorrow I can also, when I'm exploring the city, leave my bag downstairs, go explore, then come back when I have the car. So that's going to be nice. It's already 10, so I can't really eat late. So I, I don't necessarily, I'm not a fan of eating late, especially because tomorrow I have an early morning, so that might affect my sleep rhythm. So I'm going now to just walk around, maybe get some of the drink for energy purposes, because I haven't, I've just under it today. I've not eaten basically anything, except the chicken from Chick-fil-A. But that wasn't really like a meal, so I'm definitely deficient today. But I'm going to go around, maybe get a smoothie or something something light, um, walk around the city. There is a lot of homeless people. I've been stopped by like four already and the walk was like six minutes. So I'm gonna see how it is, just walk around, check the city out and then come back because I have to like draw a whole plan for tomorrow. Because tomorrow the whole idea is to explore the city and then get the car, drive to a friend's place and then plan for the next day. So yeah, gonna walk around, see what is there and then come back, call it a day, plan for tomorrow. And tomorrow we hit the road, exploring San Francisco. Guys, it's crazy, actually in California, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yo guys, what's up? Um, day one in San Francisco, it's about 10 a.m. Checked out of my hostel, but left my bags there, so I pick it up later when I have the car. So now I'm exploring the city. Guys, when I tell you I've never felt so unsafe exploring a city before, we're still vlogging in a city. Because <laughs> it's just, it's just so many homeless people, man. There's so many homeless people and they're constantly like reaching out to you and some of them get pissed off if you don't give them coins and stuff. I don't know what we have on them, it's America. So it's quite tricky but I made a commitment to myself to vlog this trip, this leg of the trip particularly, so I'm sticking to it. So now I have a couple of destinations. I was trying to map it out, but I'm just gonna go with the flow. And then I have a to-do list of places I wanna see and visit, so hopefully I can get them all ticked off. Guys, one thing which is striking is this self-driving cars which you have around San Francisco. I've seen them on videos before, like the cars that have no drivers, they're just driving 
themselves. I've seen them on video before, but just seeing them partake in traffic is actually wild. Like you just see them and they actually taxi. So people are sitting in those cars with no driver. That's quite interesting. So I've seen a couple of them already. Um, it is great to actually see them drive. But I'm walking now to the first stop, which is Chinatown. That's the biggest Chinatown outside of Asia, right? Here in San Francisco downtown. So I'm gonna check that out. And then I got a few more spots. So I'll take you guys with me. And yeah, let's go explore uh, San Francisco. All right, no one warned me about the hills in San Francisco. San Francisco is hilly and you know your boy likes walking. So anywhere that's walkable, I walk. San Francisco is a very walkable city. So I'm going to be walking a lot today, but I wasn't ready for the hills, man. <laughs> it's a constant climb. But anyways, I assume with good hills come good views. I'll take it. I'll take it for the views. But it is, it is already viewing. Ooh, ooh, look at this. Ooh, look at this. This is actually beautiful. This is actually beautiful. This is, oh, this is nice. This is nice. Look at that. Bowser. Oh, so now I'm trying to head to the Coit Tower. Apparently the Coit Tower has like a good um, vintage point of the city skyline, so downtown. So I'm gonna head to the Coit Tower now. Hopefully it's open. See if I can climb it and then see what the view looks like from there. So we're climbing the tower now and they got like on the ground floor as well some nice art pieces on the wall. I think that's like a whole exhibition. And then now I can climb. And they also nice. It's like 250 something stairs all the way to the top. And it's supposed to have a great panoramic view of San Francisco. So let's go see what it's like. I also tried asking the lady <laughs> if she knows how to order the self-driving cars because I really want to get in one. She was like, I don't know, sweetheart. That stuff freaks me out. <laughs> I'm like, man, I want to know, but uh, I'm going to try to figure it out. Okay, so we made it to the top and Fisherman's Wharf. I'm going to go down then a bit. And that right there is the Alcatraz Island, famous prison island from San Francisco. It's no longer a prison, uh, but it was very popular. And you can go there, but those things are sold out real quick and real far in advance. So I didn't even look because I wasn't that excited about it. I could see the videos online, I was good. But like here, you're supposed to get a 360 panorama view of the whole thing. You see the whole thing. You can see the whole thing. Like you can see the whole thing. This is quite dope. This is actually dope. This is actually quite dope. You can see this here as well. Where's the Golden Gate Bridge though? Guys, I have to interrupt my touring because a friend of mine just called me now and I was on the phone. And then I realized I lost my ring. Like my heart actually dropped. So I'm <laughs> heading back to the hostel now to hopefully have forgotten my ring. So I took, I think I took it out when I wanted to brush my teeth and never put it back on. So I hope that someone hasn't taken it. But that would be sad. If I don't find that ring, that would actually be sad. Like that could potentially send my day to a low. But it's okay. Let's hope for the best. Let's hope for the best. Guys. My whole trip is made. Like, my whole trip <laughs> is made. If all you guys know how attached I am to this thing, 
Thankfully, the room has been cleaned and all. Somehow, and I also forgot my coat. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> my coat. I didn't even think about this yet, so I forgot my coat as well. This has definitely made my day. I'm gonna get my coat, and then we're gonna continue exploring San Francisco in a much more uplifted mood, because the small things, it's the small things, man. It's the small things. I've been looking forward to trying Chipotle for the longest time. So it's like a burrito Mexican burrito grill thing. And I've got the steak burrito. Um, I'm a big fan of Bab's burrito. For those of you, my Maastricht family, I'm a big fan of Bab's burrito. So I love me some good burritos. And this apparently is supposed to be really good. So we'll try it out. Um, I've got all the special sauces. So let's see how it, let's see, let's see how it tastes. Let's see how it tastes. Yo. Let me tell you all something. When Burna Boy Sang tested, approved, and trusted, yeah, the chipotle is just smooth. That's the best word I can use to describe it. Smooth. And the fact that I got full after one burrito without even eating the chips, it's a plus. It's a plus. This just might be better than Babs. Crazy. The fact that I actually am full. It's a big plus, but yeah, Chipotle definitely tested, approved, and, and trusted. So I'm trying to get this cable car now, and I was gonna use the card I used yesterday from the airport to get to downtown, because you can also just load the card, like the overchip card in the Netherlands. But this lady told me, the, the ambassador of the city, told me it's cheaper to get a day pass for 13, because every time you take the ride with the cable car, it's going to cost you $8. So if you go back and forth already, you're above the 13 which you spend for a day pass. So she says you just get a day pass because you use it unlimited until midnight. So that's what I got, a day pass, $13. You can use it back and forth as much as you like today before midnight, and that's cheaper. So if you're coming and you get that card from the airport like I did, it might not necessarily be useful. You would imagine the card is cheaper because, you know, it's just facilitates so you don't have to buy that many things. But no, America thought different. So this is better if you're trying to use the cable cars. Okay, so I didn't know it, but the cable car I stepped on actually took me to the next place I wanted to visit, which is the Fisherman Wharf. So that's a nice coincidence. So now I'm going to explore that and then see what else I can find in this area before heading back. If there's one thing San Francisco definitely is, it's ghetto. <laughs> Every time I use the public toilet here, I'm like, how is this a public toilet? Like, it's just very disgusting. Plus, you're walking around downtown and you just find someone randomly, like next to tall sky rise buildings, like city center proper downtown. Someone is just randomly peeing on the streets, like just peeing on the building. If that is not the most ghetto thing I've seen traveling, I don't know what it is. That is San Francisco for you. Crazy.
Okay, guys. Whew, they drained me. <laughs> I still got a ride. But anyways, I got to the hostel, picked my stuff up, then came to the car because I had the appointment for the car at five. Got there, arranged the car. It's a, it's a nice car. It's a nice master. Um, getting around San Francisco, public transportation was actually good. For those of you who are wondering, it was actually, it was doable. Like, I never had a moment where I thought, oh, this is taking too long. Or this is, this is ridiculous. No, it was similar to European standards. Check Google Maps. It shows you walk here, stand there, get the bus. Bus always there, most likely on time. There were no crazy delays. So it was actually quite nice. So getting around the public transportation was actually good. I tried reserving the car. So the, the self-driving car. And you have to do it via an app, Waymo app, because the name of the company is Waymo, I think. Uh, but I couldn't download the app from the Play Store because my country was registered to the Netherlands and the app is not available in my country yet. So that's a bummer. So hopefully I'm going to get one of my friends maybe in San Francisco or in LA to actually rent it so I can have the experience. But if not, it's nothing dramatic. It would be nice to experience it, but if I can't, it is what it is. So now I'm going to try to drive to a Chinese pot, which was recommended to me first, before going to Gilroy to the friend's place. I might just skip that and do it some other time. I need to figure out driving first in California because this is my first time driving in America and Texas. It looked crazy. So I hope California is not that crazy. But anyways, we'll see. Because it's also rush hour. Just got to figure that out as well. But yeah, for now, let's hit the road and see what the rest of the evening has to offer. Okay, guys, I arrived at my destination. Here with my boy Clancy. I've not seen, when the last did we see? 20, 2013. 2013? Because you finished. No, no, no. Oh, damn. So it's been more than 10 years. It's been more than 10 years since I last saw this guy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Small world, isn't it? It's taller than me. Oops. Shoot. All right, guys, um, we're going to go drive around now. Um, show me the little city and then come back eat call it a night and then tomorrow is another day do it again today to date and tomorrow is not tomorrow again so then we enjoy it the way it comes 